Your Excellency, Ambassador Mario Vatani, ladies and gentlemen, a very good day and thank you for joining us. Uh, my name is Tian Hui, Executive Director for Investments at SG Innovate, and it is my pleasure to say a few words before the exciting things really begin. The topic today on Agriculture 4.0 is a timely one. Given the twin challenges of feeding a growing global population, coupled with the need to do so in a sustainable way. This latest step in the evolution of agricultural technology or agritech has within it the possibility of addressing the four major challenges of agriculture being how to improve yield, how to improve nutritional value, how to improve availability, and how to reduce carbon emissions. These are challenges that are important to us at SG Innovate. We're an early stage deep tech investor backed by the Singapore government to invest in startups that seek to tackle global problems that may impact Singapore in the immediate or near future. Agritech is an important pillar of focus for us and we have invested in companies uh, both locally as well as in Europe and Israel in areas such as sweet proteins, uh, cell grown meats, uh, blockchain based supply chain tracking systems, so on and so forth. Uh, we remain interested in all technologies that can address the challenges I mentioned earlier, and are especially keen on solutions that tackle multiple problems, like, for instance, uh, seaweed, which can not only be a source of protein and biofuel, but also act as a carbon sink. Emerging technology is, of course, not just restricted to agri-food. Uh, we are also keenly monitoring developments in semiconductors, quantum technology, autonomous systems, uh, the hydrogen economy, nuclear energy, and of course, biotech, uh, where we have invested quite aggressively. As early stage investors in such nascent technologies, we have come to deeply appreciate how all the pieces of an ecosystem needs to come together to bring innovations to market. Bringing together startups, researchers, corporates, regulators, advisors, facilitates the process of taking an idea from a research institution and transforming it into a commercial product that can be a solution to a big, global problem. I'm therefore delighted that today we have such a strong panel and experienced moderator to help us dive more deeply into the topic. I'm looking forward to the discussion to come, but before that, I would really like to invite the ambassador to say a few words. Ambassador, please. Thank you very much, uh, Tong. It's great to hear these words from you, and I'm very happy to, to join this uh, the very first collaboration that we have with, between uh, SG Innovate and our embassy. Now, personally, I've been here for a few months now, but uh, even before arriving in Singapore, Agritech has been one of the sectors that always somehow comes up as an opportunity for partnerships between Italy and uh, Singapore. And I, I, I actually very much believe in this subject. I'm very sensitive to it because I, even as a diplomat, a few years ago, I had the chance of uh, serving as diplomatic advisor to the Minister of Agriculture in Rome. And I, I must say that I saw both the potential of Italian innovation in this field and also the challenges that, that we face. And um, I had a, a recent meeting with uh, uh, Mr. Lim Chuan Po, the chairman of uh, the Singapore Food Agency. And I was really happy to see that he expressed you know, a strong interest to, to collaborate with Italy in agritech. And also, and this is very important for us to include this topic in the science and technology collaboration uh, agreement, which was signed a few years ago in 2016. So this is, this is a, a point that we're going to uh, continue uh, working on. And then also I'm happy to see uh, that Ms. Lim Melin uh, from SFA is joining us today and thank you very much. Um, now, we believe uh, that Italy has a long-standing role to play when it comes to food and agricultural research uh, and innovation. And, and truly, I, we believe that uh, we are an ideal partner for Singapore uh, as it faces the challenges of the Green Plan and of 30 by 30, which, are, which we observe with great interest and which we report on regularly to Italy and therefore reach our companies, as you will see today. Uh, now, of course, in Rome, we host the headquarters of the uh, FAO and IFAD and uh, WFP, Bioversity. The European Food uh, uh, Safety Authority is located in Parma, in our country. 
And you've seen that we are at, we've been at the forefront of technology and innovation in, in the agricultural feed and in food the, at, at the 2015 Expo in Milan. Uh, you remember the title, Feeding the Planet, Energy for the World. Among the topics that were discussed, there was that of strengthening international cooperation on sustainable agri-tech and food tech. And last December, uh, as part of the National Recovery and Resilience Plan um, uh, that uh, we have launched, um, there was a call for 1.6 billion euros uh, to realize uh, five national research centers to create synergies between universities, research institutions, startups, and high-tech companies. So there will be five uh, national centers dedicated to these fields such as high-performance simulations, computation, data analysis, the things that we saw in the videos that you were playing before, development of gene therapy and drugs, uh, RNA technology, biodiversity, sustainable mobility, of course, agri-tech. So this webinar is truly an excellent opportunity. I'm happy to see such qualified participants, such as uh, from Italy, from like Professor Ferretti, Dr. Chiara Corbo, and also the CEO of Planet Farms, which I see has joined us now, Daniele Benetov. And I really can't wait to hear about this prize-winning uh, vertical farm, which is the largest in Europe. And I'm very curious to hear from him. And I'd like to thank also Nicola Bianchi, who is our scientific attache in Singapore for helping in uh, organize our participation in all this. So I, this is enough from me. I, I, I thank you all. I thank the organizers and uh, our partners, I would say. And uh, I'll be following online and I, I happily leave the floor to Ms. Melin Lim of the Singapore Food Agency. Thank you very much. Well, um, thank you, Your Excellency, and, and good afternoon, uh, Your Excellency, Ambassador, Italian Ambassador to Singapore, uh, Mr. Tong Xian Hui, the Executive Director of Investments, SG Innovate, distinguished speakers and ladies and gentlemen. So first, let me thank SG Innovate and the Embassy of Italy to Singapore for inviting me to this webinar and to provide the opening remarks. Well, as you know, Singapore is vulnerable to global food supply fluctuations as we import more than 90% of our food. And the COVID-19 pandemic has shown us how easily our global food supply and logistic networks uh, can be disrupted. Well, in Singapore, we have a multi-pronged approach to ensure our food security, and that includes diversifying our food import sources and also producing food locally. As a small country with uh, limited resources, Singapore envisions to grow more with less through innovation and technology. Now, uh, you will have heard about Singapore's 30 by 30 goal. It aims to build capability and capacity of our industry to produce 30% of our nation's nutritional needs locally in a resource efficient and commercially sustainable manner by 2030. Um, here in Singapore, increasingly, uh, farms deploy newer technologies such as controlled environment agriculture and indoor vertical farming with LED lighting for vegetables and use sensors, IoT and data analytics to monitor and control parameters such as temperature and lighting to ensure optimal yields. And in addition, there is also research into fields such as robotics, for example, having mini drones to monitor crops for pests and disease infestation, and even AI-assisted pollination of food crops for indoor farms. And in the area of R&D, one of the themes in the Singapore Food Story R&D program is uh, on sustainable urban food production. And that program, uh, that particular theme, aims to increase the productivity for local farming to lower operational costs, improve disease and health management, as well as nutritional quality of produce. In addition, SFA launched the Agri-Food Cluster Transformation Fund or ACT in 2021, just last year, to support our local farmers in their efforts to expand their production capability, boost yields, enhance sustainability, and improve the circularity of resource use. And through these funding and technology transfers, then SFA helps local farmers to adopt technology to intensify production and to transform. Now, with that, I hope that this seminar, uh, this webinar, 
will be useful for everyone attending to understand more about new agriculture 4.0 technologies and the research and innovation in Singapore and Italy that can promote efficient, sustainable and productive farming practices in our ever-changing dynamic world. Um, um, that is uh, my short remarks. And now I will pass the session back to Brian to introduce the first presenter for the day. Thank you, Melin. Thank you, Senhui Ambassador Sir and Melin for gracing our session today. I now have the pleasure of introducing our first presenter for today, uh, Brian Koh, who is currently holding the role as the Director of Ecosystem Development at NUS. Among his many achievements and accolades, Brian was also responsible for establishing Block 71, which has become an iconic space for entrepreneurs in Singapore. Today, he'll be giving a presentation titled, Putting Our Food on Our Table, and US's Contribution to Singapore's 30 by 30 Plan. And with no further ado, I'd like to pass the time to Brian. Brian, please. Thank you so much, Brian. And uh, a very good afternoon to all those who are here uh, from Singapore or in Asia itself. And I believe for those who are in Italy and in Europe, uh, a very good morning. Thank you for taking this time to uh, you know, be on uh, this uh, discussion uh, panel itself. And uh, first of all, I, I just want to uh, thank uh, everyone. First of all, uh, Your Excellency, uh, you know, uh, thank you for helping to organize this uh, together with our partner, uh, SG Innovate. Uh, also to thank uh, the very distinguished uh, panelists that I will be on together. And of course, ladies and gentlemen, let me share a screen because I have a very quick uh, uh, update on uh, a presentation on what NUS is doing. So to start with the topic, putting our food on our table, Mailing mentioned a little bit earlier about uh, how we want to contribute to the 3030 vision. But before we get to that, I think, uh, you know, uh, you may... If you have been to Singapore, I, I, you will recognize that Singapore is a very small country, a little island, uh, often uh, spoken as a little red dot. Um, and therefore, agriculture, uh, which we do have, uh, takes up a small portion of our uh, contribution to our food supply. Um, obviously, a large portion of what we are getting uh, on today is uh, what we get imported into Singapore because as a small country, it doesn't make sense for us to uh, produce. We don't have the land. Uh, but having said that, I think many things have changed. And uh, as you can tell, uh, you know, the climate change has, uh, which we all know, and, and we see information about this day in, day out, about uh, all the changes that are taking place. We can't run away from it. It's happening. Uh, of course, much is trying, uh, being done about this, and we hope that we see that change happening. But if this is going to be the trajectory that we are looking towards, then how do we then solve this problem that we are looking uh, forward to in terms of uh, food, putting uh, food on our table itself? <clears throat> Mainly mentioned a little earlier also about our 3030 vision, which is really to uh, for Singapore's nutritional needs uh, to be uh, put uh, in 2030, uh, you know, where, where we can then provide 30% of it uh, ourselves. If you remember and, and may have heard, uh, Singapore had the same problem about water. Uh, so we have solved that problem uh, with uh, high tech and uh, with uh, the ability to do filtration and desalination. We believe that Singapore can also do the same thing here by using technology, we can change that whole dynamics of things here. So this is where the university comes into play because National University of Singapore, the oldest, as well as the most comprehensive uh, university in Singapore, uh, once and has all the ability, uh, the, the, the complete discipline uh, uh, to be able to look into how we look into agri-tech, aqua-tech, and even food tech itself. I come from a division called uh, NUS Enterprise. Our focus is innovation and entrepreneurship. And in this space, we do want to see how startups, innovation can come into this whole area itself and solve the food problem that we already have. Now, talking a little bit earlier about the 3030 vision, uh, this was actually announced in 2019. 
So this is really pre-COVID itself. It's not a problem that we uh, came about because of COVID, but COVID definitely expedited that whole process itself. One of the things that the university can do, and because as I mentioned earlier, we do have a very comprehensive uh, uh, you know, list of uh, disciplines that we cover in a sense. And where we want to look at is really a farm to fork strategy uh, where different aspects of uh, innovation can take place in the agri, aqua and food tech space itself. Uh, we don't just look at pure, uh, you know, uh, areas in terms of um, uh, just purely on the agri side of it. But if you think about urban farming, which is where we want to focus on, it comprises of a complete area in, because you are looking into engineering, you are looking into the sciences, you're looking into nutrition, there's also the medical side, and the list goes on. So that created uh, the birth of our NUS Agritech Center. It's a very small uh, center for, for a start because we wanted to grow this quickly. But this is a very important area for NUS itself. And there's a lot of focus given right now to grow this area itself. The objective here is the marrying of uh, the art and technology in uh, uh, agriculture, and actually even to aqua and food itself. An NUS enterprise in the area of innovation and entrepreneurship to catalyze, to see uh, innovation coming out through our startup companies, uh, through our research itself, uh, where commercialization and translation can take place. Let me show a very short one minute video of what we have created very quickly. <music> What you see here is uh, what we already have and set up. It was birthed in September uh, last year. Uh, the drone here is uh, one of the technologies that we're looking to. Urban farming, you don't have to So we have innovation in creating drones that can be colony flowers. So this is a peek into uh, what we have in the NUS Agritech Center, some specialized environments for optimal harvesting. Uh, we have grow zones that uh, go into high tech where we, we monitor everything with IoT, uh, everything, all the data are gathered together so that uh, analytics can be done on this. We also have two uh, precision climate zones where we can then optimize how plants are supposed to grow. And of course, in the technical zone, we look into germination, into high-tech equipment to look into things like growth for the plants and nutrition itself. So the learning point here really is, as we look at it, urban farming is uh, something that we believe. Uh, it requires multidiscipline approach to how we look into innovation. Uh, it certainly, we, we look at a vast area of uh, the, the crossing of uh, multidisciplines coming together. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, Singapore is a small space and we need to then grow uh, the area of urban farming. And therefore we, can, we believe that using technology, we can solve this problem itself. So that's a very quick uh, presentation about what we have. And I look forward to uh, you know, the panel discussion as well. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Brian, for your wonderful presentation. Uh, institutions such as NUS do play a critical role in Singapore's food story. So it's great to hear about what NUS is doing as we work towards meeting Singapore's 30 by 30 goals. Our next presenter today comes from Polytec Polytechnico di Milano. He is none other than Professor Gianni, who is the Vice Rector of the Cremona campus. And among his many areas of expertise, he specializes in the fundamentals of automatic control and simulation techniques and tools. Today, he'll be giving a presentation on the trends in agriculture 4.0. And, and so now I'll pass the time over to Prof Professor Gian Gianni. Professor Gianni, please. Uh, good afternoon to everybody. 
Uh, I will, I'm going to proceed to share my screen. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> well, again, uh, welcome to you all. Um, um, I'm the vice rector of the Cremona campus of the Polytechnic Milano, and I'm going to present the new results uh, about the trends in agriculture 4.0 in Italy. Uh, these results are provided by a long-term research um, performed in Cremona by uh, a research center uh, of Polytechnic Milano on agri-food. Uh, why Cremona? Because Cremona is a very important center for agri-food industry and production. It is not uh, located far from Parma, as already said, it is the, 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 the location of the European, uh, European um, 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 say competencies on, on, uh, on food. And of course, it is not located far from Milano, where the Polytechnic Milano uh, takes, uh, takes place. Um, so, uh, what are the, the main research questions? Uh, first of all, what are the trends of agriculture 4.0 in Italy? What is the market value of agriculture 4.0 solutions? And what is the level of adoption of digital solutions among Italian farmers? And what are their needs and benefits? Uh, first of all, the, the market value of agriculture 4.0 in Italy uh, covers 4% of the global market, which is estimated nearly in $13.7 billion. And as you can see, uh, it has been increasing uh, in, in, in past years, even during the pandemic. Uh, so for example, uh, this market increased by 20% uh, between uh, 2019 and 2020. And so it is a, uh, it is a sector which is still undergoing uh, a, a, an increased trend. Uh, what are the, the main, the main uh, solutions uh, searched in, in this market? Um, first of all, uh, solution to monitor and control, um, and control uh, agricultural equipment and connect machineries and farm management information systems. Um, as you can see, uh, the, the main applications are related to data, uh, exchange of data and managing of data. Uh, less important uh, up to now are the solution to monitor and control fields and cultivation, decision support systems, and robots or other solutions. Um, as, as I said before, uh, the, the main application uh, related to agriculture 4.0 uh, is related to data. So. Um, the first uh, place is, uh, is uh, related to data and analytics. Uh, the second one to platforms for exchanging data and uh, technologies related to Internet of Things. Uh, less important are, uh, let's say, mobility and georeferencing and other applications. But um, uh, it is very clear the importance of uh, data management data collection, data exchange, uh, and data management. Um, so what are instead uh, the uh, adoption uh, of uh, agriculture 4.0 solution in Italy? Well, the situation is the following. 60% uh, of farms uh, in the sample declare that they use at least one agriculture 4.0 solution. Uh, which is increasing by 5% compared to the 2018 analysis. Uh, of course, uh, uh, the other 40% uh, of the sample, uh, no, sorry, nearly 40% of the sample use more than one solution. 40% of, uh, um, of uh, farms do not use uh, agriculture 4.0 solution at all. Um, as, as you can see, it is a sector which is still uh, increasing. And what are the, the main solutions uh, used uh, in agriculture 4.0 solution? Well, um, as already mentioned, uh, the main, the main uh, attention is on data, management of data. So farm management information systems, 
uh, first of all, uh, solutions to monitor and control agricultural equipment, uh, solution to map fields and cultivation, precision irrigation. In my point of view, even in, uh, in uh, land rich of water as, uh, as the Cremona territory, uh, this is uh, um, a main problem we have to face, uh, mainly because of the climate change. Uh, less important are solutions to monitor and control fields and cultivation, decision support systems, and drones in field treatments, and so on. Uh, lastly, uh, solution, robotic solutions, which are, uh, which are uh, let's say, the, the sector which has a, a, larger, uh, uh, a larger field of improvement. Well, what are the main perceived benefits uh, uh, in using agriculture 4.0 solution? Uh, as I said before, water is really, really important. So uh, one of the main perceived benefits is uh, the, the, the spare of uh, water uh, and technical inputs. Uh, so this is, this is on the top of the main perceived benefits. Then soil and product quality. Water and air pollution. Well, air pollution is is another important thing because uh, uh, we are uh, we are facing uh, right here in Cremona a large problem with air pollution, which is in in, in large part due to agricultural activities. Then work safety costs and uh, last uh, yields. What are the main perceived difficulties by farmers in uh, adopting uh, agriculture 4.0 solution? Well, first of all, uh, interoperability. Uh, again, we are uh, considering problems related to data collection and data management. Uh, interoperability strictly related to connectivity. Uh, at the third place, we, we, we find the return on investment, uh, which is uh, not in the, at the top of the perceived difficulties, and uh, this is uh, this is um, uh, let's say um, a good point for for uh, predicting um, a further uh, a further uh, adoption of this uh, solution. Uh, systems competencies, and uh, this is uh, quite uh, uh, surprising that in the sense that. Uh, um, we, we thought that the, com the specific competencies related to agriculture 4.0 um, uh, were, uh, were uh, perceived as uh, difficult to reach. This is not so, according to this, this investigation. Um, well, future investments, uh, more than 40% of sample farms declare that we will invest in the next three years at least one in, in at least one 4.0 solution, and nearly the 20% want to do within a year. Nearly 5% will do it for the first time. Again, uh, the importance of data is evident. Uh, solution to monitor and control agricultural equipment, solution to map fields and cultivation, farm man, uh, management information system. Well, I, I did not uh, um, underline sufficiently the importance, the growing importance of uh, um, industrial, sorry, of artificial intelligence. Uh, well, it has increased by 12% in, in recent years, but we expect that the adoption of uh, uh, artificial intelligence solution will uh, largely increase in the ne next future. Uh, again, uh, one point to, to underline is the fact that data are not important uh, only at, at, um, at the production level. Uh, the importance of the data uh, is uh, spread all along the supply chain, so not just for, uh, for production, uh, input cultivation, but all along the supply chain. So even for processing, for distribution, for food services, and so on. So again, data is uh, uh, one of the most important issues related to agriculture 4.0 solution. Well, what are the key message uh, from this uh, investigation? Well, the market of agriculture 4.0 increases, even in hard times such as the pandemic time. 
as well as the adoption of uh, of, uh, of farmers. However, uh, it, it is perceived that the market still has to express its full potential. Data are increasingly at the heart of agricultural innovation. Uh, nonetheless, it is still necessary to work on interoperability and common standards. And third, it is fundamental to work on the valorization of the benefits coming from data sharing to guarantee true traceability. It is not possible to talk about technologies if the real value of data is not understood and if a food supply chain perspective is not adopted. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Professor Gianni, for your insightful presentation on the trends of in agriculture 4.0. We have now come to the end of the presentation segment of the event, but don't worry, we still have a full star-studded panel who will be sharing their thoughts via a panel discussion. I would also like to kindly invite our audience here today to submit your questions in the Q&A tab, as our speakers will be taking questions from there later in the session. And now with no further ado, I'd like to hand over the time to our moderator for today's panel discussion, uh, Dr. Kiara Corbo. Thank you, Brian. Good afternoon, everybody and good morning to all uh, to the public in Italy. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank the organizations, uh, the Innovate and the Italian Embassy to, for inviting me to moderate uh, this uh, very interesting uh, panel. Uh, first of all, ju just let me stand towards about, uh, to, for, for introducing myself. I am the director of the Smart Agri Food Observatory that is a, uh, uh, leading research center uh, within the Politecnico of Milan on the topic of uh, uh, digital innovation uh, on the agri-food sector. We conduct research in order to understand the impact of digital innovation uh, on the agri-food sector uh, from uh, farm uh, from, uh, from farm to fork. And, uh, but we also do a lot of, uh, of networking and communication activities because our, uh, um, our objective, our goal is to convey the research results to the decision makers, to initiate opportunities for stakeholders, to meet and debate, to promote communication in order to, to spread information and knowledge about the, the importance of, this, of the um, dig dig digitalization of the agri-food sector. Uh, today, I am here to moderate this, uh, this panel uh, with uh, four uh, uh, prominent exponents of the Agriculture for the Zero Revolution in Italy and in Singapore. Um, I would like to ask to the panelists to briefly present themselves. Uh, please, Daniele, can you introduce yourself? Hello, good morning to the Italian and good afternoon in Singapore. Uh, my name is Daniele Benatov, and I'm co-founder and co-CEO of Planet Farms. Thank you. Uh, please, Vincent. Yeah. Uh, good morning and good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Vincent. I'm the co-founder of Archisen, a local company in Singapore that builds and operates uh, urban farms. Thank you. And then uh, we have uh, Professor Gianni. And uh, Brian Ko, you already introduced yourself, but please. Uh, Professor Gianni, can you again? <laughs> yeah, no uh, as, a, as I already mentioned, I'm the vice rector of the Cremona campus of the Politico Operative Milano, and where, as I will uh, uh, illustrate uh, further, uh, a new uh, degree course is, is uh, located directly focused on agricultural engineering. Thank you. And uh, finally, Brian Co, please. Thank you again, and uh, a very good afternoon to those who, in, who are in Asia itself, Singapore and Asia, as well as good morning to those who are in Italy and Europe again. Uh, once again, my name is Brian Ko. I'm a director of NUS Enterprise, uh, a cluster of the innovation and entrepreneurship part of the National University of Singapore. Thank you. Thank you. So I will start uh, with a question for, for uh, Daniele. Um, uh, Daniele, Planet Farms has just inaugurated the Europe's biggest vertical farm uh, in the outskirts of Milan. According to what I read, um, Planet Farms has a technology that allows to, um, allow to save 90% of the area occupied in the fields and 95% of the water consumption. So uh, we know that vertical farming techniques have the ability to support several sustainability goals. 
So can you tell us uh, more about, uh, first of all, about the initiative and then about the sustainability practices and initiatives of uh, Planet Farm? Absolutely. Thank you, Chiara, uh, for the question. And thank you to SG Innovate and to His Excellency, the Ambassador, uh, for having us. So I'll just give a very quick introduction who Planet Farms is. Planet Farms is an Italian company uh, already five years in the making on the back of eight years of R&D building on a lot of the existing know-how in a lot of the areas uh, that uh, uh, Professor Ferretti uh, mentioned. Uh, although a lot of the know-how that uh, we use for agriculture originally started in other areas of the food industry, where Italy has a lot of technological advancement and has held a, a global leadership for many, many years. Um, that ties into our approach to sustainability. Uh, and I would probably use the word sustainability sparingly, especially considering how commonly it's used uh, nowadays, and focus a lot instead on the concept of efficiency, uh, which I think is something that interests us as a company and is especially interesting when we're talking about Singapore. So I think just to frame it uh, for a second, Singapore is a very, very interesting case study for us. Why? Um, so for the Italians who don't know Singapore very well, and uh, please, Anyone from Singapore, do correct me if I say anything wrong. Um, Singapore's total surface is less than a quarter of the size of Italy's smallest region, which is Val d'Aosta. This is to keep in mind what we're dealing with and why what Singapore is doing, and as uh, the ambassador was saying earlier, the approach of 30 by 30 and a lot of the other initiatives that Singapore is already grappling with is essentially the cutting edge of what the world will be dealing with over the next 50 years. Singapore is just dealing with existentially because they're hitting it first, because they've always been uh, dealing with scarce resources of things that in Italy we rarely think about. We have a lot of land, we have a lot of water, as Professor Gianni was saying earlier. Singapore has neither. Uh, now, where does urban farming and where does planet farms fit into it? Um, urban farming, vertical farming, I think are generally all misdemeanors. Uh, they're not the right names for what we do. Uh, the whole concept of what Planet Farms does is controlled environment agriculture. Uh, obviously, for its obvious reason why it's less catchy. Uh, so let's keep talk, calling it urban farming or vertical farming. But the point of controlling the environment allows us to create a new paradigm. It's a paradigm where we can still stick to what, as Italians, we hold dear and sacred, almost to some extent, which is quality of food and natural food. So without the need or a prospect to move to synthetic foods, uh, but actually being allowed to consume food in the way we've always envisioned it, but doing it in an efficient way. If we think about what a definition of sustainability is, sustainability, the way we think about it, is the ability for a generation to fulfill its needs without preventing future generations to do the same. Now, if we think of it from that perspective, that translates into efficiency. We need to make sure we leave no lasting damage on the environment and we use scarce resources in a way that keeps in mind that they will be needed for a long time to come and we need to regenerate them. How, what does that translate into? We create modules which are essentially technological modules. We started from Italy because we believe Italy is actually one of the hardest markets. If you can gain acceptance in Italy where there is high availability of fresh food, then we believe it's going to be easier for us to export this technology around the world. Uh, the ambition of the company is already global. We're already present in five countries. So um, we have a very strong Italian DNA. We're powered by uh, a lot of Italian technology, but not just. And we're already expanding across. So, so let's talk about our first farm. Um, there's a vertical farms cropping up everywhere. Those are not necessarily the solution for the future problem, but they're part of the solution. What you do need at the cutting edge, though, is developing the technology. The technology, like all technology we've known in the past, everybody who's old enough will remember Walkman. They were big, they were expensive, and they probably held an hour of music. Today, in something this big, they probably cost around $2. You can hold thousands of hours of music. You can imagine a day where vertical farming um, and a planet farm were already developing will actually shrink, become more flexible, and a lot cheaper. So down the line, we're already developing the technology that today you see in a 10,000 square meter facility outside Milan. You can envision it being shrunk and integrated into buildings where you really create circular economy where we provide food and heat, consume CO2, emit oxygen, clean the air and become part of the system. But let's talk about what we do in Milan. 
in Milan, we created a facility which really aligns with our view of the world. We're not thinking about just adapting in the environment we're in. The main thing we're adapting in in Italy is the expectation that food should taste great. Um, And food should be natural, traditional. And for example, if you're talking about salad in a bag of salad, all you want to have is salad, not a long list of other ingredients that allow you to forget the salad to market. We're using technology to allow us to create a new paradigm where we produce where the demand is 365 days a year. As you mentioned, we save a lot of land because we're very efficient in our production we save a lot of water because it's a closed system so the only water that leaves our system is the one that's within the leaves everything else is recovered recouped repurified and reintegrated the other part that's interesting is we are very conscious of the fact that in food production a lot of the waste or unsustainable practices happen downstream in the supply chain so because supply chains are long a lot of food is wasted as a matter of fact an interesting statistic is if food waste were a country it would be the third largest country in the world by CO2 emissions, which is a pretty powerful statistic. What urban farming uh, or vertical farming allows us to do is be very close to the consumer because we don't need to wash the product. um, And that is because we produce in pharma-grade environments with no one ever touching the product. That's full automation end-to-end. That means that we can get the, the virtual totality of the product we produce onto the shelf, very fresh, and tasting great. So today we're operating in Italy, but we're thinking like Singapore. We're thinking in a world where resources are scarce, where resources are valuable, and where we don't want to compromise on the result. And we're therefore where we have to use technology, capital, and ingenuity to actually find the solutions. And that's what we do at Planet Farms. We harness the best from different countries. That's why our HQ is in Italy, but we have R&D in Holland, in Portugal, in the UK. Um, and uh, we look forward down the line uh, to bringing a lot of what we have to Singapore and be able to share technological innovation, but also bring part of our heritage, which is food, traditional food and quality food, and uh, bring the flavor uh, that, that can happen. So a lot of what we're trying to do is essentially is bringing Italian food quality, but producing it locally wherever it's needed. Um, in terms of sustainability, just to close, Sustainability for us is not a series of projects. Sustainability is something you design in a system. The system needs to be sustainable. And that's how we approach it. We have the luxury of being a young company, and therefore we created it from scratch. Um, And so the entire system is designed to be efficient, where the seed comes in and the package ready to eat um, comes out on the other side with a minimal use of resources. Thank you, Daniela. Thank you. And it was really interesting. And uh, from my side, it was also particularly interesting, uh, the reason why you decided to start from, uh, from Italy, according to all the, the, the features, the characteristics of uh, Italian food and agriculture. So thank you very much for your, uh, for your presentation, for your speech. Uh, now I uh, pass the time to Vincent Wei. Uh, CEO and co-founder of Arkizen. Uh, Vincent Arkizen is a Singapore-based agritech company, as you said, that designs, builds, and operates solutions to grow ultra-fresh and ultra-local prod- produce uh, and products in cities. Uh, I would like to ask you, how was the initiative born and uh, how um, was it perceived by consumers? Uh, thank you very much, uh, Kyra. So perhaps I can share a bit about my journey. Uh, on how I came to do what I am doing now. Uh, and uh, I started my entrepreneur journey with my co-founder, Savan, back in uh, 2011. Uh, I graduated from, uh, with a degree in mechanical engineering from NUS, uh, like what Brian was mentioning. I was a product of the entrepreneurship system. And uh, my co-founder was, had, had a degree in biological sciences. And we started a company called Biomachines. Um, we were installing... IoT systems in remote places, such as uh, teak plantations, cocoa plantations uh, in Singapore, Indonesia, and Thailand. And we got to understand uh, various problems faced uh, in agriculture and forestry. Uh, We also got to work with various agronomists uh, in the field. Um, In 2016, we started Akisen uh, with the objective to innovate ways to grow food for Singapore using controlled environment agriculture. Um, at that time, there was uh, five pillars of national defense. And we felt that 
um, we could contribute to building uh, the first line of national defense for food for Singapore, uh, especially in uh, uh, critical situations. And so the word Akisen is actually a combination of two words. It stands for architecture for sensor networks. And that's how we started the company. We were playing with sensors and we wanted to see how we can improve the productivity uh, of farms. Um, our vision is actually to provide everyone with the freshest, most nutritious and flavorful produce. And our mission is to establish the largest network of urban farms in Asia by combining crop intelligence, engineering innovation, uh, and market insights. Uh, since you have a question about the perception of uh, by, by consumers, uh, perhaps I could also share a bit about how the Singapore market was like when we first launched uh, our business and we started selling our vegetables in the supermarkets. Um, the, the initial reaction was that it was very expensive um, and uh, it cost a lot to produce. And so currently right now, our, our products uh, sell for about $4 uh, a pack of salads, which is a pretty competitive price. And so that helped to alleviate that concern. Uh, another concern that customers have was that, oh, the taste is different from um, um, traditional agriculture uh, because it's, it's grown uh, artificially. Uh, and so actually currently we have products like uh, mustard and sorrel and ice plant, which really spikes the flavors and is really spicy. Um, and so they started to have a different impression of what uh, food could be produced with a lot of taste and flavor uh, in controlled environment agriculture. Uh, another perception that uh, many consumers in Singapore had was that, oh, um, there was only organic produce and there was nothing else, right? Um, and so there was a, quite a bit of education going on towards that we, that we had to do towards uh, helping them understand, understand the value of uh, something that's nutritious, something that's pesticide free, as well as supporting the local community by purchasing locally grown produce. Uh, and lastly, one of the perceptions that the con consumers had was that it, it can't be done. Um, it's too expensive to do. It wouldn't make sense. And currently we have a 7,000 square foot uh, facility uh, that produces up to 100 tons of uh, lettuce uh, per annum, uh, which can then provide a consistent supply of produce to uh, restaurants, uh, supermarkets, uh, as well as uh, various uh, food, uh, food establishments. Um, yeah, so um, very, very fortunate to be able to meet uh, the various uh, um, uh, parties here today. Um, uh, I uh, agree with uh, uh, Daniel on the importance of efficiency. I think that is that's something that uh, we drive towards every day um, because of how new this whole um, uh, um, environment is. There's always a need to find ways to solve new problems. Sorry, find new ways to solve problems and to learn from uh, other countries as well uh, on some of the technologies that they've already developed. Uh, we also do work closely with the various research institutes uh, such as the NIE, um, the, um, um, even in Australia, in, in China. And of course, uh, we also look forward to work with research institutes in Italy as well. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Vincent. Thank you very much for your interesting uh, uh, presentation of, uh, of Artisan um, and, the, and the activities. Um, now I pass the time to Professor Gianni again. And uh, uh, because I would uh, like to talk with you about uh, competencies, because we have talked about a lot uh, until now about agriculture for the zero and uh, technologies, uh, and uh, it's clear that the paradigm of agriculture for the zero requires new and hybrid competencies. Competencies. So, I would like to ask you, what is the role of education uh, in creating uh, these new hybrid competencies, and how? and then the, how the Polytechnic of Milano is contributing in creating these new competencies. Well, uh, thank you, Chiara, for the question. First of all, I have to, to mention that uh, the, um, the, the, sorry, uh, I have to mention that uh, the new Master of Science course in Agricultural Engineering, I will be talking uh, briefly about it uh, in, in the following. Uh, had, uh, was born mainly for the long-term research performed by 
the uh, agri-food uh, observatory directed by Chiara. So uh, this uh, observatory has uh, performed uh, long-term research in, uh, in uh, investigating the real needs of uh, agri-food industry and production. And uh, actually, uh, this has uh, uh, come up to the, 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 the start uh, just in this academic year of a new Master of Science course in uh, agricultural engineering. It is located in the Cremona campus for the reasons mentioned before. And uh, uh, it is, uh, I think that it is uh, uh, quite a challenging, uh, uh, challenging initiative because uh, it uh, has to match uh, two different competencies. Um, um, engineering competence on one side, uh, which, has, which, which are natural, for example, in order to, to um, uh, let's say to uh, train engineer in uh, in the industry 4.0 uh, issues but uh, as far as agriculture is concerned uh, of course uh, uh, the engineering competencies are not so common so we we found uh, a very important collaboration with the uh, uh, Catholic University, which has, uh, a, 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 um, uh, let's say, um, a course uh, uh, in, in Cremona on agriculture, on forestry and agricultural sciences. So we, we matched the two competencies and, and uh, um, melded them into a, a single course in agricultural engineering. So uh, students coming from um, an engineering background uh, in the first semester of the first year uh, acquired knowledges about, uh, uh, about uh, agriculture and, and livestock and, uh, and feed production, while um, students from an agriculture background uh, acquire competencies from the engineering background. And uh, the two populations join in the, the second semester to uh, to, to go on with uh, acquiring competencies uh, about engineering uh, applied to agriculture. Uh, so uh, this uh, very new uh, Master of Science course is uh, uh, started this year and we believe that will uh, provide the competencies required for uh, the, 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 the future of uh, technology application in uh, uh, agriculture and mainly in agriculture 4.0 solution. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Gianni. And this is a very interesting initiative and also the first initiative like this in, in Italy. So it's very interesting how the Polytechnico is uh, um, creating uh, these hybrid competencies uh, because also in our research uh, with the observatory, we uh heard several times about the fact that there is a need of engineers knowing more about agriculture of course and also agronomists for example uh, uh, that need to know more about the, the, the specific technology so it's uh, very important to create these uh, hybrid competencies so the uh, the, the question now is uh, for uh, for brian co uh, i would like to to talk with you um, about uh, the, the ecosystem, uh, ecosystem concept, because also in the Smart Agri-Food Observatory, we see constantly how important it is to, to work following a, a model uh, uh, that involves the researchers, the companies, startups, agricultural companies, farms. So uh, can you share your experience on this? So how important it is and why uh, is important to work in a logic of ecosystem in Singapore? Uh, in the perspective of inspiring ideas, but also from a financial perspective. So, for example, about the role that venture capital are playing. Thank, thank you very much. And uh, thank you for that question. I think it's a very important question. Uh, in fact, that's one of the things I deal with every day. Um, uh, let me just kind of finish up a little bit and add on to what uh, Professor Gianni talked about in, in terms of um, the approach of uh, education itself, uh, which has a lot of relevance. <clears throat> uh, even in NUS, the way we look at university and to solve the uh, agri-tech problem, as I mentioned earlier, it has to be multidiscipline approach. Uh, and therefore, even for us, we are innovating the way we look at academia and education itself, uh, which is why you notice that uh, NUS is moving towards uh, 
the phrase that we use an uh, interdisciplinary uh, uh, approach to our education itself. So it's not just you uh, graduate as an engineer, but beyond being an engineer, you hear or learn about another discipline itself. And what that creates is uh, the dynamic of being able to see and solve problems that are very differently uh, uh, you know, looked at because you cannot use your traditional uh, methodologies to answer just a <clears throat> engineering problem. Uh, I'm glad, uh, you know, someone like Vincent, who comes from the whole system itself, you know, being a, a, a mechanical engineer has gone into agri-tech, and, and, and that is the proof of its putting itself. So moving on to uh, your question, uh, Dr. Uh, Chara. Um, yes, ecosystem is a very important piece in the whole uh, innovation and the startup space itself. Uh, I often tell the startups, it's not just us providing the environment as in, you know, the four walls, and sometimes even in the agri-tech space, in certain equipments, uh, you know, the grow zones and all that. That's only one small piece of the whole puzzle of building a successful startup. It has to do with the entrepreneur itself, the educating of the entrepreneur. And that comes with the engagements with industry players. So people who are in the industry itself, experts, uh, uh, corporates play a very important role. Uh, many of these solutions that we are looking at uh, cannot, it's, it's very different from your typical um, B2C approach where you go directly to the customer. There's a whole supply chain, a value chain that you need to look into. So corporate engagement is a very important piece and that's where we also look into that. Uh, coupled with that, the community, because many of the solutions that we look at involves looking at uh, and understanding with the engagements of other fellow startups and entrepreneurs how they solve certain problems so that they don't repeat the same problem itself. When they go to a new region, what are some of the uh, landscapes that they need to maneuver upon on uh, maybe policies, uh, uh, governance, and, and uh, legal requirements? So that sharing from the community becomes very important. And of course, when it talks about funding, this becomes important as well. So... Uh, we also have the engagements with uh, investors, uh, you know, from angel all the way up to bigger investors uh, into uh, your B, C, D, E round and all that. Uh, plus the fact that uh, we're, we're happy to say in Singapore, we have a supportive government and there are many policies that also promote in this space, as you can tell, uh, you know, in this whole new area itself. So it's a whole complete. So to me, an ecosystem is really, uh, you know, where you join many of the dots on these uh, uh, different comp on components of the ecosystem to then be able to complete or provide an innovative solution that's uh, also not just uh, uh, a solution, but it's uh, scalable and repeatable. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for uh, for your uh, for your answer. Very interesting and inspiring answer. Uh, now I I have seen that, uh, that there are several questions in the Q and A session. We don't have so much time, so I'm so sorry, but I have to pick just a couple of questions. But I think that uh, the the panelists will be happy also to share uh, the the email or to reply later, to answer later. To, to the very interesting question arrived. Just uh, I um, would like to ask to um, Professor Gianni uh, about the market increase uh, for uh, the, the market value, value increase for agriculture for the zero in Italy, because I think that uh, everybody was quite astonished in uh, looking at the 270% uh, uh, growth uh, from 2017 and 2018. So uh, what accounted for that? Well, um, let's say that precision uh, farming solutions were already adopted quite largely in Italy. But in that year, I think that the, the theme, uh, the themes related to uh, agriculture 4.0 uh, were uh, more uh, directly perceived by farmers and by uh, agri-food uh, producers. And uh, um, above all, uh, uh, more technologies in, in that year uh, were available at uh, uh, lower costs 
and uh, uh, even more uh, performant with respect to the past. So uh, in, in that year, uh, a combination of uh, a, a larger uh, diffusion of, 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 the, of, the, of the perception of the benefits gained by the adoption of the solutions and on the other hand, uh, and say uh, um, a more uh, performant uh, uh, solutions, both from the point of view of technical uh, reasons and from economic reasons, uh, um, uh, were uh, were uh, were gained. Um, I would also like to say that we have also the feeling that the agriculture field is uh, not so. Uh, not so, uh, let's say, uh, interested in uh, innovation in technology, in innovation in technology. But this is absolutely not true. In fact, uh, our farmers and our producers are very curious and very, let's say, uh, um, uh, let's say, uh, yeah, they are curious about innovation and they are available to introduce innovations where they see a real gain in, in their work. Thank you. Uh, thank you. And now uh, I would pick a question um, about, uh, let me see. Okay. Um, there was a question, I think, that uh, our panelists from uh, Singapore will uh, be happy to, to answer, but um, it's about the, uh, the, the financial effort, because uh, uh, the, 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 the attendee says that uh, one of the Singapore's current agricultural pain points is the lack of affordable technological equipment suited for the industry. So even uh, uh, with importing the equipment from overseas, uh, the cost-benefit analysis will not make financial sense. So in this regard, what do you think would help to resolve this matter? I think that uh, Brian Cole, but also Vincent, uh, Vincent can uh, answer uh, according to their experience. Sure, sure, uh, Chara. Uh, let me try and attempt answering this. Um, I don't think we can solve uh, the uh, food and agri tech uh, problem uh, purely just on, um, you know, growing our own crops, and which is why the thirty thirty vision is just thirty percent, because we know that the reliance on still import is going to be important. So I think uh, uh, from Meiling, who has uh, was we gave a little bit of the opening remarks, also mentioned that it's a multi pronged approach to how we want to solve our problems in that sense. But certainly we want to increase, uh, you know, the food, uh, locally uh, produced food. Uh, I'll leave Vincent to talk a little bit more about that. But um, when you look at, and I think there was a question about how much of uh, the 3030 vision, it's, we're actually very far away. I don't have the specific numbers, but I would say we're ranging between uh, barely five to 10% uh, within that range itself. So probably something like, I don't know, seven. That's my, my, my guess in a sense. But how are we going to solve this and with equipment? Uh, I think Daniel uh, mentioned a little bit about that earlier. And, you know, when we, and I, I like how he position, positions everything. It's, uh, you know, a, a controlled environment, precision uh, uh, farming in that sense. Um, uh, we don't have the real solutions today. And that's why we're working very hard on this. But I believe that we, well, we will be able to, with the innovation and the change of paradigm in how we look at farming, will be able to produce something whereby the yield and the cost will be uh, equitable and in fact will be profitable as well. The example I mentioned earlier, uh, Singapore faced a water problem in the past. It would seem impossible for us to do water fil filtration to make it uh, possible that water becomes uh, you know, a commodity for us to use on a daily basis. But uh, I'm glad to say that today we are able to uh, be self-sufficient in that sense. Uh, so now we are definitely working on the agri-tech side of things where as we look at um, you know, innovation in this space, how we change the paradigm of looking at farming, uh, that will actually uh, uh, change the dynamics of the yield, which today, if we look at it, would not be equitable. But uh, certainly with innovation, I believe in the years to... In the, Near future, I would say, we'll see those answers happening. Uh, Vincent, I believe you might have more to say on this. Yeah, uh, thanks, Brian. Um, so how, how, how we made our salads uh, that we are selling now profitable, 
um, is, uh, is a very important focus on productivity and also the cost of production, um, as well as understanding the market and, and the entire value chain and understanding how, how to make sure that costs uh, and the drivers uh, for the various parts of the value chain are properly managed. Um, internally, we do have, have a lot of emphasis and R&D uh, focus on automation as well, which would increase the labor productivity. Uh, and just tapping on what uh, uh, Brian was saying earlier about other areas to look into uh, in technology, um, AI, uh, I think uh, Prof, uh, Prof uh, Jani did mention about it, uh, is also um, something that is of key focus for many farms over here. Uh, we do work closely with ASTAR, uh, to develop crop models around that, that would help to do uh, predictive analysis. Um, and also the crop science piece that helps to make sure that the, the produce uh, fits the taste and flavor uh, of the local community. Uh, and perhaps I could just take a step on what else is needed to make sure that this works in Singapore, for example, aside from technology. Um, I think firstly, education is important uh, to bring awareness to the public that uh, consuming local is, is, is healthy, uh, is good for the community, uh, and that uh, it's available. Uh, secondly, I think farms need to work together uh, rather than against each other. Um, for example, the sharing of data, coordinating uh, market demand. So for example, uh, for us, we are currently part of this uh, Alliance for Action group where some of the farms work together to see how we can better coordinate uh, the local uh, produce and demand. Um, training is also very important. Um, I think uh, um, the various institutes such as the polytechnics and universities are trying to uh, train a new pool of agriculture uh, skill sets right now. And lastly, about the funding, I think uh, Singapore Food Agency is uh, doing a, a fantastic job of supporting the various local farms over here on the various R&D uh, as well as technology initiatives. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, if, uh, Dr. Chiara, if I just had two more points that, you know, uh, to answer that question very quickly. Um, you know, if, when we talk about efficiency, uh, in fact, the, the two things that we can see, you know, cost of equipment is expensive. Yes, that's right. But um, as uh, Daniel has mentioned, you know, in what he calls controlled farming or uh, what I term as urban farming. Two other elements that actually uh, changes the dynamics of things. Because of a uh, controlled environment, uh, we actually see a lot of less wastage. Actually, the efficiency of harvest is a lot higher. So that's a very important piece that actually increases the yield. And, you know, there's a lot more that we can be that can be discussed in this space. The other element that actually brings a change in the dynamics of this is because farming, uh, precision farming or, or controlled farming, also uh, the produce have a longer shelf life. So actually there's again, once again, less wastage and there's uh, you know, better use in it. And that, that increases the yield. Uh, a lot to talk about this, but I just wanted to mention that. Thank you. Thank you, thank you so much, and thank you to all the panelists for very this uh, very interesting uh, interesting discussion. Uh, the time is running out, so I have to leave uh, the floor to Brian for the closing remarks. Thank you. Thank you so much, Chiara. I would like to thank all our speakers here today for the insightful and knowledgeable panel discussion and presentations. Uh, I, I think I can say on SG, SG Innovate's behalf that it was a pleasure to have a group of, uh, of, of experienced um, speakers like yourselves here today sharing your insights on such an important topic. Special thanks to Chiara as well for moderating the session as well as for, and to Nicola as well for his help with putting this event together. Unfortunately, we weren't able to cover all your questions due to time constraints, but I would very much like to thank our audience today for engaging with us and sending in your questions. Um, do also take note that we'll be sending out a post-event email with important information, including a recording for this webinar, so do keep an eye out for that. And with that, we have come to the end of our session today. Thank you all for spending your Wednesday afternoon with us and Wednesday morning in Italy with us. And on behalf of SG Innovate, I'd like to wish you all a great week ahead, and we look forward to seeing you again at our next event. Bye, everyone. Thank you so much, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Bye.